Hey, Battle Built, here with another video, getting some more Go Battle League battles, except these are going to be practice battles in the Kanto Cup meta. These battles were recorded before Kanto Cup and Ultra League dropped, but by the time this video gets out, those metas will be active. I have two teams of three for you today for you to potentially try out in the Kanto Cup meta, but also let me know in the comment section below which you would like to see more content on on the YouTube, because I feel like Kanto Cup hasn't had that many ranked situations where you get a bunch of good teams for success. So I'm trying to give you a couple teams here, and we have six battles. Three battles with the first team, and then three battles with the second team. But if you want to see Kanto Cup, you want to see Open Ultra League, let me know. Like I said, by the time this video is out, the Go Battle League metas have updated, so you will be doing your next week's worth of battles until Niantic o'clock next week in either one of these metas if you decide to PvP. So, let's jump into it. You see the first team here. I'm not listing moves and IVs just because to save myself a bit of an editing hassle. But I have battles against my viewers here. This first team has an Alolan Sanshu best buddy lead. It's a nice, shiny, almost Shundo. It's like a 15-15-13 lucky. A beautiful Mon here with Shadow Hypno on the safe swap and then regular shiny Needle Queen in the back. We have a relatively positive lead here with Alolan Sanshu going up against Hypno. We're going to want to spam the heck out of these Night Slashes, but we do have to worry because double punch hypno is pretty uh popular and common in the uh canto cup meta as you'll notice we boosted there so we decide to shield the predictable fire punch i was going to come through you either want to run thunder punch fire punch in this meta or you want to run thunder punch shadow ball i guess you could maybe get away with fire punch shadow ball but those are the two main move sets you're going to see on your Hypnos. And I really do like Double Punch uh, in the Canto Cup meta specifically. As you'll notice, I stayed in here. I could have went to my own Hypno to match the Slappers, but my Sanshu boosted. So I wanted to see how much my little Sanshu could pop off. But I was worried I was going to get outpaced there. So I decided to swap at the end, even though I was about to get to another move. Now, this team I have not used for actual ranked Canto Cup battles. But I have used it during the interlude season and during times where Canto Cup was around. And uh, the matches, essentially, in my mind, didn't count because there was no ELO associated with them. I like this team a lot, but after we get through two matches, you're gonna, we're going to notice a weakness here. Actually, the weakness is kind of in front of our face, but it's not the end of the world because Hypno is able to uh, leave that Lapras matchup with so much energy. But Sh uh, Shadow Alola Marowak and Alola Marowak are going to be is going to be the main top counter for this team of three, with Fire Spin being super effective against Alola Sanshu's Ice Steel Typing, the Ghost Damage being super effective against Hypno, and then the Bone Club damage, as you'll see there, against the Needle Queen, on top of the fact that Alola Marowak resists all the poison damage from Needle Queen, Marowak, Alola Marowak, and Shadow Alola Marowak are uh, going to be tough mons to go up against with this team of three main, though that mon being the main weakness of the uh, collection here, and I do expect to see a bunch of Shadow Alola Marowaks, because it's one of the newer mons in Kanto Cup battles, so I would expect to see that a bit all over the place. As you'll see though, we were able to play around it and take the dub there. Very well played by my opponent. Do keep in mind though, these matches are against viewers, these are not ranked ELO battles, so not this match specific but a couple matches throughout the video just be patient with the people I'm battling against. They, it was very nice of them to join me during my Twitch stream. If you ever want to watch and see these types of things in advance, link to my Twitch is in the description of this video. And uh, they were very nice to oblige me and do some practice battles before the meta had dropped. So I'm greatly appreciative for my viewers helping me out here so I can get this content to you as soon as I possibly could. So getting into this next matchup, we have Alolan Sanshu on a Sea King lead. Not super ideal because we're worried about Drill Run. They threw Drill Run on the first one, but they go Icy Wind on the second one. I wish I would have called the Bay, but now I've set myself back really far considering the fact that I've committed both shields here. And I am going to take out the uh, my opponent's Sea King here, but they have an Alolan Marowak in the back also. This one being a regular regular Alola Marowak. The one positive that Sanshu has is the Lisa has Night Slash to kind of hit Marowak. I mean, the hits were super effective, but Night Slash and it's non-stab, it's a bit of a small move, so uh, it's not going to do a bunch of damage, but it's still a little threatening. We do have to go into Hypno here, but this match is essentially GG. We gave up both our shields in the beginning, and again, Alola Marowak just does super well against our entire team of three. Thankfully, we were able to land a punch and get the Marowak kind of low. At this point, I was going to try and sacrifice my uh, Sandshroom, but I come with Needle Queen, and my Switch Shimer is not even close to being up so I couldn't even swap out if I wanted to so it's better off just coming in with uh, the sand shoe there and essentially sacrificing it I also tried the catch there which did not work so now my opponent's built up to two dark pulses they're gonna throw back to back 
take out my Sandshrew, and take out my Nina Queen, and it's GG's to my opponent here. So because of the weakness on this team of three, and I really don't like this team of three being as weak as it is to Alola Marowak, we do make an adjustment to it. We swap out Nido Queen to get a hard answer to Alola Marowak, and you'll notice that in this next match, it'll be in the form of Pidgeot. So I should actually change that, because I want to be a good YouTuber and good content creator. So give me one second as I get the change on screen. That Pidgeot's really small. I really shouldn't try to do this all in one take, but like, that's just kind of how I like to do my content at the same time. Minimal edits. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a little scuffed like this. Sometimes it works out for the better. Regardless, we didn't miss out too much here. Snorlax going for a charge move ends up being a Skull Bash. Not really the move you want to be, uh, Throwing or running on your Snorlax in the Canto Cut meta, like I said, please be patient with my, my viewers. That should have definitely been a superpower. Maybe they could have baited Body Slam, which I could have potentially called there. Or the superpower could have landed and it would have taken out my Sanctuary's remaining health. We'll see if that comes back to bite us. But, or if that could have potentially come back to bite us. But they did have a Venusaur in the back and Pidgeot and Hypno both do quite well against Venusaur. So... Either way, the alignment would have worked. It would have been a very positive situation. They then come in with a Water Gun, a Bow Tie, Lapras. Water Gun in this meta is not like, you know, complete, uh, completely uh, unrealistic. It is possible to see it. I do think you prefer to run Ice Shard, but if there's a bunch of little Marowax and Fire types everywhere, it does not hurt to try and run um, Water Gun Lapras in that situation. But we are going to take the dub. We are going to two Shield Flex in this situation. Lapras is just not going to be able to do enough damage with its Water Guns or generate enough energy. That's probably one of the other issues about running Water Gun Lapras. But does have some play in the... Um in the Canto Cup meta. So, this is where it continues to get scuffed. We have the new team coming in here with Lapras lead. Pidgeot essentially... Uh, not on the save swap. They swap first because we won lead. And then... Um, we matched their Lickitung with, we matched their Lickitung with the Pidgeot, but now we're running our own Alola Marowak here, and it is also a Shadow Alola Marowak. You'll notice something a little funny about my Shadow Alola Marowak in just a moment, but we end up winning out that situation by really uh, big calling the Bray Bird right off the jump, knowing that Lickitung's love to, uh, to not shield because of how thick they are, so we went immediately for the big move, but that could be a little bit of a suspicious uh, matchup to play. But you'll notice on our Shadow of Lola Marowak, we have Frustration on it still. So we're only running Fire Spin Shadow Bone, and honestly, out of all the Shadow Mons to still have Frustration on, Alola Marowak's one of those Mons where you're not... You're not losing too much matchup-wise. Is it ideal? Of course not. But a little Shadow of Lola Marowak, even with Frustration still on it, as long as you have Fire Spin and Shadow Bone on it, still has a bunch of play in the Cancel Cup meta along with other metas. At that point, I ate a Water Pulse because I counted five, and I thought an Icy one was coming through, so that was unfortunate how I went down there. But Bone Club is nice to have as a bait move. Thankfully, though, Shadow Bone is not super expensive of a charge move. If we were still running Shadow Ball mainly on our Marowak, then you definitely want Bone Club just because the bait ability is so much more necessary for a charge move like Shadow Ball. For Shadow Bone, not as much. And now, as you'll notice, Nino Queen is getting to another charge move. We're going to go for a Surf. They've debuffed the heck out of us. We're going to get the Surf. No Poison Jab sneaks through because I think it was a CMP tie, or at least we're getting off our charge move to take him out, so the damage isn't going to get done. And we're in an Ice Shard on Ice Shard matchup here, trying to ice each other down, and the Dugong ends up just barely taking that match. I was so tight, but that's what happens when Needle Queen comes in. Even though you can shield the Poison Fangs, the constant defense debuffs are going to be tough to uh, get around, especially when it's your last Mon, you can't clear them. But uh, maybe if I call that Water Pulse, I end up winning that match. So keep in mind, I like both of these teams I'm demonstrating here, especially a Lapras Lee with Shadow Marowak and Pidgeot in the back. Very bulky, very high damage. Lapras gets these Surfs quite quick. Pidgeot can hit hard with Brave Bird, Shadow Lola Marowak, and spamming uh, Shadow Bones even with Fire Swim. Really puts in work, solid coverage, not like triple weak to anything that I'm seeing right off the top of my head, and not anything that I saw when I initially tried out this team either. My opponent pulls a really good catch there, but they're at a shield disadvantage, so our hope is to come with Pidgeot and Brave Bird and take out their Eradicate. We're going to let them get off the first charge move because Crunch can debuff. We also tried to go for um, an Overfarm and a Feather Dance, hopefully trying to essentially... Uh, gust them down and leave the situation with a bunch of energy it does not work out because of the fact that we got crunch debuffed i was hoping that the attack debuff from feather dance 
would allow us to survive. Did not work out, but we sold the shield and the little Marowak was able to farm down the Raticate, so it works out really nice. My opponent tries to pull another amazing swap in this situation, but I don't fall for it, thankfully. I don't throw when I get to the charge move. That's typically like a really big mistake, but it's always it's always such a 50-50 situation. Sometimes it's really predictable to throw when you get to the charge move. Sometimes people are predicting you to over-farm, and then, and then they'll swap when you've over-farmed the Fire Spin or two or three, depending on the mod of the move. So sometimes throwing, once you get to a move, does work out for the positive. That's one of the great things about PvP, how it hit or miss and how uh, you really got to outthink your opponent as much as possible. And it's a little bit of a guessing game from time to time. Got to bluff here and there. Maybe do something once, then don't do it the second time to really catch them off guard. We're able to take the dub there. Uh, really well played by the opponent. We also had very nice alignment. And again, like I said, I really like this team comp. Lapras with Ice Shard. Also, you'll notice move sets are not down there, but as the battles have gone by, I'm sure. You've seen the move sets. We're pretty much running all the normal ones. The only real move that should stand out on either team of three here is uh, Marowak with Frustration. And um, earlier, the Alolan Sandshore. I like Gyro Ball over Blizzard just because Powder Snow, Night Slash do plenty against any grass types you're going to run into. And then Gyro Ball will hit any Alolan Nine Tails that you're running into, which is not a super popular mod in the Kanto Cup meta, but because it's a Charmer and because Alolan Nine Tails is just such a good mod in general, I wouldn't be surprised if you run into it from time to time. So, getting into this next match, you'll notice we landed the Brave Bird on their Snorlax. We're going for the Farm Down, and we did have to use a shield. We've eat expended shields one a piece on each side we have a bunch of energy from the farm down we're going for a feather dance to bait their last shield we get the bait and because of the debuff we survive the uh poison jabs even after um the Brave Bird debuffed us, so we land another Brave Bird, and this match is essentially over. I do make a slight mistake. Mistake, I kind of like blind swap. I don't know what their last Mon is, but I'm like, let me go into my most healthy Mon here, being the little Marowak. The positive thing here is, as much as we're taking super effective damage from uh, Lick of Tongue's Licks, we resist both the Body Slams and the Power Whips. I wonder, I feel like Single Resist Power Whip is probably the better move to go instead of Double Resist to Body Slam. I could be wrong. Somebody quote me in the, somebody let me know in the comment section below. As you'll notice, I'm falling too behind in this video, but we throw the frustration. I really wanted to see how much damage it did in this situation, especially because we were sitting so well because of how well the matchup played out, but apparently a neutral, non sad frustration is still worse damage-wise, even after you build all the way up to it, than a double-resisted ghost move of Shadow Bone onto a Lickitung. I guess because of the stab. No, frustration, they made such a terrible move. They don't want you to uh, utilize it the way that we utilize return. So that's the main reason why frustration is as bad as it is. And we're still able to pull the dub because of all the Brave Birds that the Pidgeot was able to pop off in the beginning of the match. GG's my opponent. I'm sorry for the BM. Had to throw the frustration there for the content. I hope the viewers at home enjoyed. Please, in the comments section below, let me know what you thought of either team. Also, I'm back on this YouTube grind. I'm on summer vacation. Finally, school year is over. So I'm going to be getting out videos as often as possible, minimum five days a week. That's the goal. By all means, submit me some Ultra League content. Submit me some Kanto Cup content. I want to shoutcast your battles. Please just send me 10 battles. I will take care of the rest. 10 battles featuring Amon, a meta team, Spice, something crazy, uh, a, a theme team. Anything you want to see, the link is in the description of this video. Please let me know your thoughts on the two teams I ran. I highly recommend both of them. I think they both will work well in some Cancel Cup battles. I enjoyed them for this practice and sure will be trying them out in my own Go Battle League battles for this week. Also in the comments section below, please let me know which meta you prefer to see videos on for this week. Ultra League or Kanto Cup. It was kind of split. My Twitch chat ended up going with Kanto Cup, so I'll be streaming that. But if YouTube goes with Ultra League, then I'll make sure I get the Shoutcast content ASAP, since on the Twitch stream I'll be playing more Kanto Cup than anything. But by all means, tune into the Twitch streams. Links always in the description. But on that note, thank you so much for watching. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. I've said everything I needed to say. I will see you all in the next... Oh yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Preach!